Hey, what's up guys? This is Will from Going Out Some Places and thank you for joining me on my little own adventure of leveling up my home office workspace. So, so far we've talked about my shelves, my chair, standing desk, my monitor, speakers, wall art, and a whole bunch of other organization pieces. But if you remember where I left off, one thing I haven't figured out yet is the gap that's between the Ergonifist standing desk and the wall. So how do we get here? Well, here's a little recap. I started this series by building my very first walnut shelves and that's what you see behind me here and that's what was needed to add some life into the room. But this was all before I decided to get a standing desk and so when the Ergonifist Shift 2.0 came in, I realized I had a problem on my hands which was with the monitor, the microphone, boom arm and the DSLR webcam that there was no way that this would clear the shelves in standing mode which is what you see behind me here. So what I had to do was basically pull the table away from the wall so that it could do exactly this, which was clear the shelves. But this created a problem. There was now a huge gap between the wall and the desk. And so in this video, I'm gonna be putting my woodworking skills to the test and adding some new skills by building my very first console table. Well, I'm back in the garage and today I'm going to show you how to DIY your own plumbing pipe console table in a beautiful matte black finish for the legs and an awesome walnut pine finish on top with the wood. But before I begin, make sure you watch all the other videos in my Level Up Your Home Office series. It's going to be invaluable for everything that we're going to be learning today. So why don't we first start off with all the materials that you're going to need for this project. And I laid them all out on this table right now. And I'm going to start on this side. So you're going to need a finishing sander that's going to be doing all the sanding, a 120 and 220 grit, gel stain uh, in walnut color, a pre-stain mask for all that uh, dust that's going to be flying out in the air, polyurethane in semi-gloss to finish up uh, the stain. And then everything over here is actually brand new items that I had to get for this project at Home Depot. Um, it's actually really easy to pick up. Everything is pretty much off the shelves and it gives you that awesome industrial look. So first is the matte black spray paint that you're going to need. And over here, all those galvanized iron pieces. We're going to start off with the long steel pipe here. Uh, this is 24 inches. It has a three quarter inch thread, which is the same across the board. We have two nipples. You're going to find out about those. Coupling, uh, T. These are the 90 degree elbows we're going to need for the legs. And finally, two flanges. Oh, I forgot one last thing. Got a bucket of water here. And this is going to go in for step one. Well, now that everything's dried and cleaned up, we're now ready to assemble the console legs. These are the main legs. We have coupling here. We have a two inch nipple. You'll notice that there's a lot of thread here. And the beauty of piping is that the thread actually allows for a lot of flexibility because you can turn it to raise it or lower the height of the legs. Next is the T. T is gonna go in. The way that the legs work is that you have the two elbows that go on either end. And finally, we have the flange, which is the final piece. That's the one that goes up on top, which connects to the wood. And so that's really easy. Just tighten it on top. But let's see if I can actually get it to 29 inches. So from bottom of leg to top, it's pretty close. I think I can tighten it just a little. We're going to do it on the other one. We got our two legs, but I think I have a problem. Uh, we have the console table wood I have here measured to spec 69 inches long, five and a half inches wide. If I place this right on, this is way too wide. Okay, you gotta factor in the wall, the molding on the bottom. So this can't be right up against here. I gotta bring it out a little bit. If I bring this up for a mounting, it's gonna maybe look something like this. This isn't going to work. I think I have an idea. I'll be right back. Well, I am back. I've literally just been to six different Home Depots spread across two days, buying the wrong parts, exchanging them, buying more wrong parts. Anyways, I think I got the setup that I need for this. Two more flanges and this, these are uh, two inch nipples. Don't ask me why they're called nipples. 
and I've returned a couple of those elbows. We're gonna do a completely different leg setup. So I got the T already on our long bar. This is one that I had to buy new. This is 48 inches. It was very hard to find. A lot of places were sold out. Um, so using that as a crossbar, I'm now putting in our original bars on. These are for height. The flanges are used for that connection with the wood. These two nipples add that extra height I need. And finally, we got two flanges, okay? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the height that I'm looking for. So originally I talked about uh, a height of 29 inches, right? So that's my current side tables that you see in my office setup. They're 29 inches high, and so I thought this whole time that I needed 29 inches for the, the legs here. But then I forgot to factor in the thickness of the wood that was going on top. And so that measured in at three quarters of an inch. So instead of 29 inches, I actually needed 28 and a quarter inch. Okay, that's pretty close. Uh, the last thing you want to think about is that if you're putting any sort of uh, padding at the bottom, you can factor those heights as well. This is the wood that I have, and I think this works really well. This step is done. We're moving on to the next. This next step is all about spray painting the legs to the color that you're looking for. Now you can keep it raw, and a lot of people like that look, but for this particular project, I'm looking for matte black so that it matches the look of my home office. I'm gonna be giving it a nice coat on both sides. I got my mask, the ventilation's up, and uh, we're gonna get started. I waited a full 20 minutes for it to dry, which is just long enough for you to be able to handle it, which is what I need to be able to flip this over. Back to spray painting. All right, so the spray painting is all done now. We're not gonna do another coat. I don't think it's really needed based on what I saw with the first coat. At this point, there's nothing else we need to do. We're not gonna apply a clear coat. We're gonna keep it matte. We are going to let this dry for a full 24 hours, where it's gonna be fully, fully, dried and we're ready to mount the wood on. So uh, we're gonna move this off to the side and we're ready to work on the wood. The next few steps are all about taking the wood from its raw form in pine to its stained walnut form. Now I have an entire video dedicated to this in the Level Up Your Home Office series. So make sure you watch that where I take you through this step by step. I'm gonna fast forward this on my own end and I'm gonna bring you up to speed to the final few steps, which will then be about bringing the finished form of wood with the legs and into the home office. Well, for this last step in the garage, what we're gonna be doing now is assembling all the pieces that we've created so far. So this is the matte black painted legs using those iron pipes. And then finally, we have the tabletop, which I've stained a nice walnut color. So they're ready to go. All you need here is like the table. Uh, I got tape measure, pencil, screwdrivers if we need them, a bunch of screws that I found around the house. These are just extra screws, wood screws. You wanna make sure that the length is right because you don't wanna puncture the wood on the other side. So just long enough. The first thing you gotta do, of course, is lay it all out. Make sure that it is properly measured and balanced. What you wanna do now is draw some circles uh, to make sure that at least we have these marked. So one thing I forgot to mention is that when you set this down, you wanna make sure that obviously your tabletop is set the right way. So whichever side you want on the bottom, which is what is facing up right now. I've decided, okay, this side has a few more imperfections, so I've decided to use this on the bottom side. I'm gonna do a small little starter hole on each. Now it's time to screw things in. I totally screwed this up. This should be at the bottom. This kinda works. As you can tell, wasn't expecting this to be at the top, but I mean, there's not gonna be a lot of sway in this anyways because it's not a big table. So this is going to be a nice addition to the Level Your Home Office collection. To set it up in my home office, I pulled out my table and side table. With the Ergonifist Shift 2.0 fully raised, I found the right angle to slot it in, well, eventually. The problem with my flooring is that it's not even, so what I had to do was get a few felt pads and basically put them on one side of the flange so it angles the console towards the wall. 
It works, but you'll notice that it's not the most stable. That said, once I put everything onto the console and with the standing desk as a guard against tipping the other way, I feel like this is fine for my use case. Look more closely though. But there's a problem. The depth of the console is just a little bit too shallow and the gap way too wide. So I decided to redo this piece of wood by buying a brand new plank that's a lot wider and should fit the bill. Slotting the console table back in, I am much happier with the result. Now I can display more of my collectibles that my wife would rather not have in the living room, and I now have a spot for my books and some greenery as well. If there's one gripe, it's the Ergonifis power bar installed on the left rear of the table. When the table is lowered, I can't really access the USB ports and plugs. I have to raise it, plug it in, and then lower it back down. Not a big deal, but a bit of a minor annoyance. That gap is nearly gone with just enough space for my cables to squeeze through. My standing desk can be raised fully while clearing the shelves as well. The office is leveled up once again. Well, that was way more complicated than I thought it'd be. Nipple jokes aside, a lot of mistakes were made, but luckily a lot of solutions were found. If you're curious about all the materials and things that I needed to make this project happen, cost, where to buy those things, just go to the description down below, I'm gonna have all those details. Hopefully this gave you some inspiration in terms of solving your wall gap problems, but if that was a little bit too specific, at least it gave you some ideas in terms of how to build a really basic console table from scratch. As always, I appreciate all the views. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so, and I'll see you guys next time on Going Awesome Places.